What's up? Don't, don't mind the plastic. The problem we got with this 93 Volvo 940, which is my vehicle, as some of you know, is uh, you can see here, this, this piece came from California, so this is in pristine condition. Uh, we got these two little tubes right here, and on mine, they're all blown out with rust, and one of them's leaking like a sieve. Every time I fill the tank up to the top, I end up with a half of it on the ground here. So I think it was time to replace this thing. These parts are no longer available. There's one available that doesn't fit the description of my vehicle. With these 940s, you got the Regina system and you got a Bosch system. Two totally different fueling systems and totally different ignition systems. So uh, that can be a kind of a pain in the ass when you're uh, trying to get these 940s rolling again so <laughs> that's gonna drive everybody nuts anyways uh what am i trying to say here so yeah so we got a leaker good thing is volvo makes it easy for you to get to i just gotta pull all this crap out of the trunk four bolts inspection cover and it's right there you know unlike a general motors vehicle where you gotta pull the full tank down from underneath it which is always a fun a fun day because the tank's always full and you need to fix something this thing looks to be in pretty good shape. Came with the gasket, came with a little lock ring. And I can hear the float moving freely inside. We gotta test that out before we plug it in. Hopefully everything works in there. Um, what else? Got some little cracks in here. There's a, where did I see it? That short post right there. Ah, so the camera shut off on me while I was trying to explain that. So I got a couple little cracks. You saw the one there, if you can. Got one <clears throat> up in here. That's kind of typical for what I've seen of uh, the south, uh, southwestern USA. We got Phoenix and LA and California in general. You know, with the higher temperatures, you get degraded rubber. You know, and up here we get road salt, which kills all the metal. So uh, it's kind of a pick your battle, you know. But I'd rather replace rubber than metal. It's cheaper. <laughs> so, and I'd rather live in warm weather. But that's neither here nor there because I got to get going on this a thing. So let me get you set up. We'll get cracking on this. Some light. Gotta have the snow brush out in there year round. Never know when it's gonna snow in the summer. That's my way of getting rid of uh, bubble wrap. Instead of sitting there and wasting time crushing it, I just put it on the floor and walk over it all day. It's gonna drive you guys insane, but. I can move it aside for now, for the people. Right, we're getting in here. Luckily, this is all. This is probably supposed to be fastened down, but it isn't. I gotta move you guys in a little bit. Ta -da. Now, before we get too crazy here, oh boy. Can't do that. Just want to check the uh, fuel gauge, kind of see where we're at. Got to do a comparison there. Looks like we're just a hair to the right of halfway. And I'm going to go ahead and plug in that uh, sending unit there and see if we can make this gauge flop all around, empty to full by flipping it upside down just to make sure it all works. And then uh, when we get the thing in the fuel, we will see if it works. Let's see if I remember how this crap comes out of here. I got something in here. Quarter turn. Yep. Oh, crap. Oops. 
So this looks to be what I'm looking for here. Try to figure out a way to do this without letting the pump spin dry. So I do not want to do that. Let's see. Make sure the plug's the same. Yeah, I got green crusties in there a little bit. Never had any problem with the pump or the fuel gauge. So, for the heavier gauge wires that are, uh, oh no, actually, no, it's a fuel gauge that's crusty. It's been working. Look how perfect this thing is 25, 26, we got 26 years, no rust. And granted, there shouldn't be any salt getting into the trunk, but still, if it was a Chevy, it would still rust. I've seen it. Oh, so, you know what we'll do? We'll turn the key on, let the pump do its thing, and then kill it. That would be the smart thing to do. Okay. Key is on. And we're going to plug it in here. That should be reading empty right now, I would imagine. Mind of dinging. But, uh, yeah, you see the fuel light's on. So what we're gonna do is flip this upside down, let that float travel all the way up. Boop, just like that. Keep that balanced in there like that. Uh-oh. It's not what I wanted to see. Son of a bitch. <sighs> Can't win, can ya? So what's the problem here? So better to find that out now. Oh, we got something happening now. She's awful slow. Usually this gauge is lightning quick. It's just bam, bam. Maybe it needs the fuel for conductivity. Who knows? That whole clip was probably upside down. Wouldn't shock me. I can stick my foot in this door here. There we go. I don't know why it's taking so long. It's moving slower and slower as it gets up there, so I'm gonna call that good. So it goes back down fast. Oh, that I did not want to happen. I just ran the pump dry. The pump works. All right, so now it's on full, and it went right up there. Go figure that one. I just noticed here. Uh, didn't do a very good job heat shrinking these. I can see air bubbles in the heat shrink, so I'm just gonna go ahead and heat that up and try to reseal that before we put this in. Eight millimeter. But not quite. Actually, a lot of these hose clamps are probably, yeah, it's a nine millimeter, that's an oddball. Go figure that one out. Usually these clamps are uh, SAE sized. A lot of the times, unless this is a OE Volvo clamp, I have no idea if it is or not. Could be. And that one's an eight figures. I'm gonna go through this flip flopping back and forth to size this thing. Oh, that fits. That's a seven millimeter, I believe. Nope, six. Six mil. Got that double clamped because. Uh, I just got regular fuel line hose on here. And granted, system pressure isn't as high as modern vehicles. The running pressure on this thing is about 40 pounds per square inch. It's not uh, 60 or better like uh, most newer vehicles. Direct injection is a whole other animal. We're not even going to go there. So, clamps look like they're holding up pretty good. Not too rusty. Oh boy. I'm gonna have to get some tools. Oh, I'm way in here. <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing that. Oh, there she goes. Oh man. Got a little bit of rust in there. I'll let that drain out. Take the rust with it, hopefully. She's stinky. All right, so what do I have going on here? Got some wires. Looks like I 
Looks like I put some of my vintage Japanese motorcycle connectors on here. The brown, the brown. I just want to make sure the wire colors don't change before I go unplug and everything. I have black to black, pink to pink, brown to brown, black and white to black and white, right? Why is that white? Can't tell. That's black and white on that end, the white on this end. Oh no, they're black and white. All right, we can unplug them. Ugh, they're just bullet connectors. I did put dielectric grease. These probably aren't the best things to use on an automobile because you can see this one's starting to turn green. And even the connector itself is. So I might, I might just cut these off. Do it the right way. Well, the only crappy part about that is, how am I going to heat shrink it without setting the thing on fire? <laughs> That's the question. I suppose could do it after uh, put everything back together. Still pliable. That's a good thing. We've got two more. We've got the fill fill a neck to pull off, and the, I believe that's a vent. Take a note of this piece being at 12 o'clock. Yeah, wait till you see this. Got the handy dandy hose remover. Bam. Thing works good. All right, so we got that. Ow. Oh, I can't feel my shoulder. Okay. Now we got one more. That is not a six. It's a seven. Or eight. Let's try the nine. Well, the seven, actually. No, it's a seven. Boy, that one's rusty. Might want to change that clamp. Holy crap. Yeah. Right. Oh, man. Right, I'm starting to hurt. Ah, shit. There we go. Okay. I don't know. Stuff all this. I'll tell you where you can stuff it, buddy. She's nice. Yeah, it's been on there a few years. <laughs> As all the, all the powder flows. Yeah, we're gonna get rid of that. Ah, crap, crap. As that all goes right in my fuel tank. All right. This is gonna be a pain because they cannot get this thing. There we go. Big old clamp. It looks to be from its condition. It looks to be a factory to me. Well, you can never tell. Oh, that's gonna be tight. Yeah. I was trying to fix the leak before. I wish there was a way I could tuck this down. Keep it from flying back up. No, I got a half tank, so it shouldn't be anywhere near the opening. better shape than that one so I'm gonna use that one. Whoo! I'm getting high. <laughs> Fumes. <sighs> Breathe deeply. Why is he stuck in there good? Yeah that ring is usually really can be difficult to get off. It's usually not as easy as that but I've had this thing. I've resealed this a couple times trying to fix this leak when I didn't know it was coming from the plastic. Okay, so I gotta go up. If I remember right. There's a trick to this. Give it a little turn. Ooh. I made it easy. The whole top just came off. 
That wasn't supposed to happen. Even though you give you an opening, you don't really make it that easy. To be honest. Sounds like good, did it? Let's get that drain. I think that's just a sign that that thing was ready to be replaced. Usually they don't come apart like that. Oh, I broke one of the little tabs off. Anybody want to take a gamble on where that ended up? Don't you want to bet that's at the bottom of the tank right now? That's drained. It's supposed to come out in one piece. As you can see, it's not what we got happening here. Gas pissing out everywhere. Come on, damn it. Yeah, okay. Let's see if I can see inside the tank here. I don't see. Maybe we got lucky and the plastic fell out. I don't see anything. A couple little pieces of crap at the bottom. Not gonna worry about that. There is all the crap we retrieved in pieces. This thing is looking ugly, man, compared to what I got. That pump's still good. What's that? Pots professional professional pots. That pump's been in there for over fifty thousand miles. I I I bought this car super cheap because it needed a fuel pump everything was a pot and so as i was saying before the camera switched to camera mode instead of video mode stupid gopro yeah so the whole cow this whole thing was a pot when i got it this is the one that came with my car so uh the guy had started a fire with the wiring on us so it was a disaster that's why i got all this going on here because he had melted all the wiring you know so i put my vintage japanese connectors on here Lost my train of thought, stupid camera. Anyways, that's how that went. Uh, just comparing the two uh, pumps. I mean, look at the color difference. I, you know, I don't know what the story was with this. I don't know if this is because it's OEM original from 1993 when it rolled out of the showroom, and it just this is just Massachusetts fuel that does this. Or well, this one is relatively new. This looks. I mean, it looks freaking brand new to me, but I know how stuff in California compared to stuff in Mass looks, you know. The other thing I pointed out when I was talking to myself and the camera wasn't rolling was uh, this little guy here was eliminated from this one. I guess this, this absorbs uh, pressure pulses. It's supposed to, and I guess that's a that can be a cause for low, low fuel pressure. It kind of looks like an old 60s, 70s, 80s master cylinder off an old American car. Interesting. It's just another leak point from what I can see. And uh, they just went, they went right to the pump and just clamped it right on there. But look at this, look at the difference in size of the sock. That's the sock that came with my replacement. And this is what I've been running. I believe I might have got this. You know what? This is an aftermarket sock. That's probably why. Really small. That probably wasn't the best course of action. I can't remember where I got it. Probably advanced auto, no doubt. Because it was quick and cheap. Geez, looks like my gasket's in better shape. I might want to go with this. I'm going to play around with these parts here. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to definitely go with mine. So, anyways, it's starting to reek in here because this fuel tank's wide open. So I'm going to get motoring. All right, so here's something I didn't really think of is, uh, well, we got a new iron harness with the new pump, so I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of this. And just push that right in there and pull it out the other side. That'll be the end of that. That was my wiring repair from the uh, fire that the previous owner had. That looks like it's been leaking some road salt in, so I'm gonna give that a good spray down of uh, LPS3. Boy, it just barely fits in there. I cut that zip tie and that thing's gone, so. Alrighty. Coming in. Tight squeeze. 
I'll try to get my head on that thing. I think I'm small. So I just lubed up that O-ring there. I'm gonna have to feed this wire through for the harness. In case you guys can't see, the light get moved. Yeah, this is a tricky part, trying to get that fuel pump in that baffle that's in there. I don't know if you guys saw that. I probably should have showed it. That's a little baffle. The bottom of the gasoline. You gotta try to you gotta try to get that sock down in there. That's what I'm fighting. This is oh yeah, this is the trick here. So you can't put this in. You gotta put the gasket in first. I remember. I'm remembering as I go. I'm probably blocking you. You guys probably can't see crap. Okay. So I gotta slide this off of here. First, I got it right where I want it. We don't want to pull this out again. Because I don't even know how I got it in there. <laughs> that happens sometimes. Ah, this, I should have done this. These are the things that bite you in the ass. Nothing like doing something twice, right? That's what we love to do that around here. I gotta let this gas pee out of here. It's gonna end up all over my friggin' floor. Fuel is money, man. I ain't giving that stuff away these days. Right, I'm getting impatient. Put the gasket in first, guys. Do yourself a favor. Going swimming. Yeah, I gotta grease this one. Try not to drop it in the tank. I think I've been huffing too many fumes. That yeah, fits nice in there. Now, the object of the game is to get this thing back in here without knocking the thing back in. Don't sit on the wiring harness. That will make things difficult for you. Okay. Now, we gotta make sure. It's hard to really see, every one of these is different. You wanna make sure you get this. I wanna get the pump square to the bottom. And this thing is oriented totally different than my old one was. I'm just going by vision here all right cool okay lunch time for me we'll come back at you yummy some mulberries These things are great stain the hell out of your teeth boy they taste good though we got a mulberry tree in the ad one of the few that are left around here old timer told me that's what they're called so that's what I'm going with. I trust some guys. Good stuff. Uh, my LPS3 is all clogged up. Yeah, this thing. Now we got nothing coming out of here. Figures. I'm trying to get just a little bit on there. Always the way. I'm going to go fix this now. Uh, I swear I spend more time fixing the crap I own than I do fixing anything else. There we go. Now she's working. As we spray LPS3 in the fuel tank. Stuff's a good rust proofer. It's like Cosmoline, only better. I've said that before, but it's what it is. It's good stuff. Gonna feed this guy back around. Coming in right here. Get that a little tug, I guess. Oop. Pull the wire through, dummy. Oh, I need to be. It's in there pretty snug, I guess that's what we want. Make sure that LPS is all the way through here. Get that in there. Route this around. Uh, where am I? I'm trying to hold the hand. <laughs> the hand. I'm trying to hold the light and the camera with one hand. Feed it 
through here no we cannot so we'll zip tie that just to keep that from flopping around go ahead and plug her back into there that'll be, that'll be that and i got a little of this stuff Moves oxidization. So I figure I got it, might as well spray it in there. Even though we don't have a bad connection, why wait for one, you know? That's more than enough. Okay, that's enough waiting around. I might as well use these ugly zip ties where nobody will see them. And they're not gonna reach, of course. Yeah, they work. Somebody had uh, put these in a weed whack I had and was using this as a weed whack. That's where I got them from. So I figured I might as well put them to use, right? If I can get the stupid thing around here. Yeah. You're not even in the frame. Unbelievable. So from, from a weed whacker to the Volvo. Hey, that's a little better. I zoomed way in. I'm using just about every scrap zip tie I got around here. That came out of the Firestone airbag controller set. This one I had laying around from something. So there you go. Multicolored zip ties for your viewing pleasure. Alright, got my new clamp. So I drop that down the hole. Actually, Let's put this on before we forget, because that's gonna happen. And what I'm gonna do here, probably not, they tell you not to do this because it'll open the chances up for you over tightening it. But, whew, we're getting a plethora of fumes today. I'm gonna be high as a kite by the time I'm done in here. Okay, let's get on. Oh, you know what I did? You dummy. <laughs> oh, I gotta love it. Ran the wiring harness and I didn't put the cap on oh you dummy you so guess what we gotta do take it all apart again wonderful oh boy story of my friggin life just call me do it again Smitty so we'll, do this. we'll do this again you idiot Good thing was I was able to save my junk uh, zip ties, except for the except for the clear one. I had to cut that one, but the other ones I was able to get apart with a pick. Cause I'm a cheap bastard. That's just how I roll. Well, I got too nutty. Just gonna give it another little bump. It's starting to get hot in here. It's actually not hot. It's about 88% humidity right now. And I'm bleeding. What else is new? Bleeding, doing stuff twice, swearing. It's just another Smithsonite episode. What can I say? <laughs> ah, I quit. I'm going in. I'm gonna start drinking. Let's try that again. While I was down there, I found my clamp on the floor that I didn't know about. Must have knocked that off at some point. Ah, okay. Got my magnet handy because I'm probably going to do that again. Okay, so that's how that ended up. It pained me to use another zip tie, so I just wrapped it around. And then I split that old crappy zip tie in half and used it here and here to keep this little box out of the way the the piston and the rod for the trunk here so, so that's that i'm a cheap bastard you guys know that let's keep on motoring here put a new clamp back on here oh that's gonna be tightened down a lot of course that's a different size Nothing less. Ah, you little bastard. There goes the clamp. Didn't hit the ground yet, though. Sad part about that connection is 
Well, as you know, you left it loose when you go to get gas. That'll be convenient, let me tell you. Three dollars a gallon right on the pavement. That's always a good way to put me in a good mood. I want to get a little, uh, a little rust proofing action going on these uh, tips here. Yeah, I should have went about this a little different. That's okay. This is the top one. You always know your uh, supply nipple there that goes to the top one. That's the, the longest one is the supply, the feed to the engine. The other one is, uh, I don't know, man, $300 for a GoPro camera. I'm not very impressed with this thing. Keep shutting down on me. I had no idea the thing just stopped recording. So I think I was talking about the nipples on the pump here the, the long one the taller one that's a supply going to the engine and the short ones a return going back in this is a vent and that's your fill tube so pretty simple i gotta try to get down and get this uh worm clamp it's way the hell down there i gotta put you guys in a different spot because that whole clip you couldn't see nothing but the back of my shirt so okay that should be a little better you guys <laughs> to my right <laughs> That shouldn't have to be that tight. That's a return line, so that's not gonna go spraying anywhere. I'm gonna hit that with LPS3, that clamp, because we all know what will happen after the next few winters. I'm hoping not to have to go in here again for a long time. <laughs> shoulder just locked up don't mind me hit my friggin head for the 15th time that's yeah, good thing i'm not six four i mean this is one instance where being short's an advantage and i'm still bitching and moaning about it i can't imagine being any bigger than me getting in here and trying to do this it's so stupid of course you guys could probably stand outside and reach in here <laughs> that ain't gonna happen with my short arms and short digits I'm taller than all y'all when I lay on my back. I didn't just say that. Did I? Try to keep this thing from rusting. All right, covered with LPS3. Recording anymore? Yeah, we are. I don't believe it. So, I'll show you what we got. Covered is the uh, fill tube, the vent. And on this side, you got your, that's your feed with the two clamps. And then below that, you can't really see too well is the uh, return line that's the hose right there and then just hosed it down with lps3 for corrosion protection and that's about that only thing left to do is turn the key and open hope it works ah, so stupid all contorted i don't know if i'm gonna get out of here Oh, crap. Whew, reeks in here. All right, moment of truth. I'm going to give you some light so you can see. Once I turn the key on, that annoying sound will stop. And more annoying sounds will begin. Hey, the fuel gauge works. Is it going to end up where it was? Oh, I forgot to cycle the key. Get some fuel up in there. That should be good. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta turn the AC on because I'm sweating to death. Whew, it is sticky. That's probably too loud for you guys. I'll suffer, I keep it on low. The fuel gauge is just slightly lower. Unless my memory's bad. I could have sworn it was slightly above half. This one's slightly below. Kind of a good thing to take note of. That'll make a difference on when you want to go get gas. Check engine. Yeah, they had check engine lights in 93. Something to do with the idle. Idle control signal is missing from the ECU. But that's another problem for another day. The car runs fine. I'm not concerned with it. Oh, we 
are getting it. Volvo power. Watch out. Wow. Look at that tack jump. 114 mighty horsepower. <laughs> he actually, my buddy with the Camaro, he, uh, he has this drag racing app on his phone. And uh, we were heading down a road here. He was sitting in the passenger seat and I stuffed it to the rug. This, and it'll tell you what the quarter mile time is and it'll estimate your horsepower based on, on your weight. I think I ran a, a, like a 28 second quarter mile. It was, a, it was ridiculous. Zero to 60 was like 15 seconds. Yeah, this thing's no speed demon, but she's reliable. Reliable as a stone ax. We're at 184, 184,518 miles. And counting. Whew, felt nice to get in that air conditioner for about 30 seconds. But that's that. We're gonna button this thing back up, throw all these panels back in. You guys don't need to see that. You pretty much get the gist of things. Rest of it's done. I'm trying to think of what else I need to yap about. Probably nothing. Volvo 940. Fuel pump installation, fuel pump assembly. This could fall under the category of a fuel pump install because we pretty much did just about everything you're gonna do when you change a fuel pump. I guess I could show you this one that fell apart on you. If you have a, just in case you might wanna know. This thing here, you, you just pull these off, you give them a little twist. Yeah, easier said than done, right? The other one came off a lot easier, but these will pop right off. You probably want to, if it's this difficult to get off, you probably want to pry it off. But you see that little tab in there, you pry that plastic tab up and then this whole thing will slide right out of there. All right, so I'm going to show you just for the sake of showing you. Just pry up on that. Yeah, try to give it a little tug. Okay. And pull on that little strap there. I got that out. Is that all we got? Yeah, it should come right off now. Okay. Okay, there's that part. I gotta get this in widescreen somehow. Alright, it should be a little bit of shot for you. So so this thing come off. Now you just got the little plug here, you lift up on that. This is pretty easy. Do that with your fingers. Yeah, I guess that blue. That blue tab's gonna come out of there, I believe. Everything's gonna be a pain nowadays. Wow, and there goes the, that thing disappeared. Went into another dimension, but that's okay. So be aware of that. So now you just lift up on that. Don't go too crazy like I just did there. Boom, this little piece here will slide off. And that's it, see? Now you got your fuel pump. There's a little check valve in there. I've seen these check valves go bad. I had one Volvo come in here. Guy has the exact same one as me, except it's a wagon. And uh, it was a 95, but this little check valve in here, it failed in the wrong direction. So you drive, it would it would start up every morning. You drive a couple miles down the road and... The... All right, this thing's starting to piss me off. Third time the camera died. So... Like I was saying, you get a couple miles down the road, the thing would die because uh, the fuel pump would just, this valve in here would just shut down. The pump would run. So, you you know, you'd hear the pump run and you'd think, oh, you're all set, you know. So it, it would completely, it would completely crap out and, you know, starve it for fuel and you were dead on the side of the road and it wouldn't restart until the next day. So I ended up finding that out. I had to pull the fuel pump out and I energized it in a in a little cup full of acetone just so the stuff would dry up quick. When I first connected the wires, I had a stream eight feet in the air and then I double tap, you know, double tap the positive connection to the battery and uh, the thing was running and not a drop. It was not even a, a dribble of uh, acetone coming out of there. So. So that, that proved it right there. I ordered a new fuel pump, and he's been driving it ever since. That was uh, four years ago. He's still driving it. He's, he's got he's got like 250-something thousand on his. A lot of miles. His is a lot rougher shape than mine, but it's still running. Good cars. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of this sock. This is an aftermarket sock that I bought. So if you see one like this, steer clear. <laughs> 
better off buying it straight from Volvo. Can't cost that much, you know. So anyways, that's about all I can tell you there. We, we kind of we kind of butchered this thing. We we broke the little tab off. But that's neither here nor there because this thing's pretty much junk for all intents and purposes. So, yeah, got pretty rusty. The other one is in much better shape. So hopefully that LPS3 keeps that from happening. And now we got a head start because the part came from Cali and it's never probably never been in salt ever in its entire life from the looks of things so it's gonna last quite a long time i got lucky finding that one because yeah i don't think those things are very uh easy to find you know there aren't very many of them left so pots are starting to get harder and harder to find so it's getting to the point where if you see something on the internet that looks good probably want to buy it keep it around buy yourself a pots car you know keep these old girls running because uh pots are getting harder and harder to come by but anyways, yeah, I'm going to get you a pot number for that uh, fuel pump. We'll be right back with you. All right, so there's your pot number, 3507495. And th this is a 93940 that we just worked on, not a 7. What the heck is going on in here? What are you guys doing? What's everybody doing? I smell like gas. You love the gasoline. You love the gasoline. Hey, little buddy. Little gizmo. That stinks, huh? <laughs> little guys. Rough life these guys got. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, you're sideways. How'd you get sideways? Working hard? Ah, oh, yeah. Go get some drinking. Alrighty, so that's that. That's a wrap. I gotta recharge a air conditioner, a window air conditioner, and a uh, dehumidifier. Two years old. Welcome to the 21st century. You can't even get appliances that last more than two years. You got cars that break down after 40,000 miles. What a world we live in, man. I tell you, they're killing us. But, anyways, hope you enjoyed that one. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out in the trunk with me. <laughs> But it was more fun for you than it was for me. My back is killing me now. I'm gonna go get some uh, medication for that. I'll cause banquet. <laughs> Anyways, we'll see you on the next one.